Okay, remember that when you have a pile, the capacity is born from two components, the side friction resistance and the end bearing resistance. This is a tau and this is a sigma, right? So, we know that if the condition is drained, then we use the beta method to get Fs. And the beta method is like this. Fs is equal to sigma prime v naught, right? The vertical effective stress in the middle of the segment in question. And here we have just one layer, so basically you would have your point here, right? Times K naught. This is the horizontal stress. Tangent of phi, and then Cm and Ck. So you know this. When do we use this? In the drain condition. That is, in the short term for course, and in the long term for coarse and fine. All right. So the next thing to do is to realize that if we have undrained conditions, for example, well, the only example, the only way we can have undrained conditions is in the short term for fine grained soils short term for fine grain soils, right? Long term, short term. So if we have undrained conditions which only occur in the short term for fine grain soils, then we use to get FS, we use the alpha method. Okay? This is the this is the topic that we're going to be covering in in, in this video. So, uh, you know how to use the beta method, you have examples, etc. But, the alpha method is new. So, what is the alpha method? Well, it's a way to get FS. Beta method, FS. Alpha method, also FS. This is alpha times SU. Very simple. What is U? The SU of the layer in question. What alpha? Well, alpha is what we have to determine using the reader. So if you go to the reader, <coughs> uh, this is, I don't have any page numbers in my reader, sorry, but this is in uh, inside the Deep Foundations section, obviously. It starts with two, the number two, and it says the undrained friction capacity is estimated by calculating FS with the alpha method, etc. right? So this little chart here tells us, or plot, <coughs> tells us what alpha should be depending on the SU of the soil. So for example, let's say that our soil, this one right here, is a clay with SU equal to 50 kPa. In that case, <coughs> we go to the SU here, 50 kPa, alpha is 0.75. All right, so 0 0.75 times 50. Okay, sorry. So um, 0.75 times 50. So that's uh, that's 37, 37.5. Okay, so that's that's the method to determine FS when we expect undrained conditions. Now, just a few comments about this plot here. Notice that the curve is basically made up of three lines. Okay, that's our way to simplify a curved data set. But the the, the thing to notice here is that when the soil has a low strength, the alpha is high. And when the soil has a high strength, the alpha is the lowest that it can be, which is 0.5.
So remember that this is for undrained conditions, and undrained conditions basically only happen in clays and silt. So mostly clays. So this is essentially a method for clays, even though it does apply to silts as well. Now, um, what happens is this. When the clay is soft, or has a low strength, then the, it adheres very well to the pile. And this alpha is called the adhesion factor. So, um, again, when the clay is soft, it adheres well to the pile, therefore the alpha is high. <coughs> Conversely, when the clay is stronger, it adheres less efficiently to the pile, and therefore the adhesion factor alpha is lower. The minimum, which is 0.5. Okay, now below this plot there is another plot. We're going to talk about that later on, so you can ignore this for now. This OCR, uh, OCR alpha plot. So just concentrate on this top one.